guys, this is Cookie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I spent 80 bucks on my kitchen transformation. If you're new to my channel, make sure to check out my previous video. I have already transformed my bedroom, my living room, my hallway, as well as the bathroom. If you do have the chance, do check them out. I had a lot of fun transforming my rental apartment. And as you know, I'm on a very tight budget and that's the reason why I only have 80 bucks to transform my kitchen. As I'm sure you're well aware, 80 bucks is by far not enough to change the tiles and do some in-depth renovation. But since this is a rental and I don't have much money available, my main objective is to make everything look nicer. Consequently, don't expect that the kitchen is going to be completely new. It won't be. But I've tried my best to make a few changes that make a significant impact on the way the kitchen is perceived on a daily basis. Without further ado, let me show you what the kitchen looked like at the very beginning when I moved in. As you can see, we have the main entrance here on top and if you take a right and walk all the way down, you're standing right in the kitchen. And that is the space we're going to tackle today. Now let's have a look at some before pictures. As you can see, a very old kitchen. It only has one cabinet and some random bookshelf that is standing right next to the sink and a very, very old sink. Now the question is, what can we do with this kitchen with only 80 bucks to spare? the kitchen was something I definitely had to change because I love making food I love being in the kitchen and to me the kitchen definitely has to be clean and has to have a lot of storage spaces so that I can make my breakfast my lunch and dinner in the kitchen on a daily basis let me take you along and show you what I've done to my kitchen a kitchen of my size would normally have tiles throughout just because when you make food there's a lot of water vapor that would go up and it makes a lot of sense to have tiles throughout a very small kitchen like mine. However, as you might know from my previous videos, my landlord didn't have much money when he did whatever renovation he did to this apartment, so he only used tiles for the bottom part of my kitchen. Consequently, the top part of my kitchen is something I had to change and I decided to put on some fresh paint. Also, because one color looked a bit too boring to me, I decided to put on some shapes as well. And you're going to see how I did that with some painter's tape. It was a lot of fun. I definitely recommend doing it. I wanted the walls to be baby pink, so I started with a coat of paint. I ended up doing two coats of baby pink paint. Then I used some painter's tape to put on the squares. Subsequently, I used some red paint to fill in the squares with some paint. I decided to do two coats of red paint just to make sure the color comes out vividly. And after two hours, I took off the painter's tape. Make sure not to wait for too long before taking it off, otherwise it will stick to the wall and it won't look as nice. What do you think of the end result? If you've had a thorough look at my before pictures, one thing you should have realized is that the fridge is very, very old. Regardless of if you look at it from the inside or the outside, it looks very used and the grey color doesn't really help, especially in a small kitchen where it would be much more beneficial for the fridge to be white and shiny. As a consequence, I decided to give it a fresh coat of paint. I used some white chalkboard paint and it turned out really nicely. It was very easy to do. It works like normal paint and as a result you have a nice chalkboard fridge which can be very handy if you're like me and you rush out of the house and don't know what you have left in the fridge you can write a few things that you're missing on top of the fridge and it's easily erased just with a bit of water if you do have a fridge or an empty wall or any piece of furniture that is sort of large where you could write something on it i wholeheartedly recommend this chalkboard paint it is available in different colors but in my case make the most sense to choose this color here you can see a before picture of the fridge. Unfortunately, you can't really tell how rundown it was because the picture is very blurry. But take my word, it didn't look nice anymore. Also, fun fact, for some reason this fridge was situated in the living room first. Not sure why, it definitely makes much more sense to have it placed in the kitchen. Now it's finally time to take out that chalkboard paint and start painting. I decided to do three layers of chalkboard paint. The reason being that my fridge was rather dark. So in order to have that nice feeling I wanted it to have, I needed three coats of paint. I know, I started off saying I could write on top of the fridge and remind myself of what I needed to shop. But let's face it, that didn't happen. Instead, I put on a bunch of cute flowers in order to welcome spring. As for all the makeover videos that I've already shared with you, it was no difference in the kitchen. It only had one light bulb. It didn't have a fixture of any sort. It was just one sad light bulb. Have a look at it. So sad, right? It's literally just a light bulb. I'm not even exaggerating. So that was something I definitely wanted to change. I got a ceiling lamp secondhand for cheap and it works really nice with the color concept I chose for the kitchen. As I said in previous videos, it's not hard to change a light fixture by yourself. 
just make sure to turn off the power circuit before you do anything with the lights and then you're good to go. It helped me a lot to have a look at the instructions that came with the lamp but generally speaking they are pretty much the same so once you have mounted two of the ceiling lamps in your apartment you pretty much have to hang off it and just have to dare doing it. In my case it saved me quite a lot of money because it can cost a lot for someone to come to your house and mount all the light fixtures. For that reason I'm very happy that I did not have to do that and just did it by myself. Here we go, a quick before picture before I started putting the lamp together. Pretty standard to put it together. First of all, I had to put the three arms into the base. And in a second step, I had to connect all the electricity strands together. Just make sure everything sits tightly, then put on the little hats. That's how I call them because they look like hats to me. One thing you can't see because I cropped it in this video is that I actually used some electric tape to put around the hats just to make this safer in the long run. The last step is to put on the base, which is what we'll be mounting onto the ceiling in a moment. Once again, make sure everything sits tightly and we are ready to go. Of course, you have to take off the original lamp first. Then it's just a matter of putting on the base, which is very standard. If you have ever mounted a lamp, it will pretty much be the same. Then put in the new light bulbs and your new lamp is ready to go. Ta-da! What do you think? Now the kitchen sink and the kitchen faucet was something that I was thinking about for quite a while but there's no solution to it besides tearing it out and getting a completely new sink which is absolutely impossible for the budget that I have. So I decided to leave the sink as it is, just clean it thoroughly and change the faucet. I think that makes quite a difference because the original faucet has quite a flaw, it is very short. So when you want to wash your hands or any pots that are a bit larger and take up space in the sink, you have to make sure that you wash them towards the middle of the sink. There's really no way to make use of the whole sink because the faucet is just so tiny. I'm hoping that it makes some difference by changing the faucet to one that can be tilted and moved around 180 degrees. So we will see how that works out. I do agree it would have been the best to tear out the sink and get a new sink but that costs so much money and it would have involved changing all the floor as well as the tiles on the wall because it's all connected to the sink and that is just so much money that I'm not willing to spend on a rental apartment so I just left it as it is. The only change I'm making to that particular part of the kitchen is to change the water faucet. One word of wisdom in case that's the first time you're changing a faucet, which it was for me. Make sure to turn off the main water switch, otherwise there will be so much water coming out, you'll be shocked. Besides that, it's pretty much straightforward, you just need a wrench, it might be a bit hard to get it off if it is a very old faucet, and put on the new faucet using the wrench once again. Finally, your new faucet is ready to go. Now the next problem I believe everyone with a kitchen can relate to is that you have so many things in the kitchen, right? I love making cupcakes and all sorts of cakes and what so not, so I have a lot of kitchen utensils that need storage space. I'm sure that if you do use your kitchen, you might relate to the problem that there's never enough storage space in the kitchen. In my kitchen, it's even more so because I only have one kitchen cabinet, if you think about it. I have no overtop kitchen compartments, nothing at all, and I need much more than that. For that reason, I got a kitchen table in white that fits very nicely into the dimensions of the kitchen that I already have, and I used some storage baskets to put in some additional storage space. While there was no way for me to put in any additional cabinets on top to use that space, I was able to use a lot of storage racks. Since my landlord allows me to do whatever I want, I put in a lot of holes into the walls because I believe if the things are much heavier that I'm planning to put in there, it makes a lot of sense to drill holes into the wall. Also, if it's something that can always be used, as in once I'm leaving, I'm going to keep the things in there and the next tenant can use them equally, it makes a lot of sense to put holes into the walls. If you can't put holes into the walls, there are a lot of options to achieve exactly the same result. So don't think you can't have a better kitchen if you can't put any holes into the walls. Let's get rid of that very quickly and mount another storage shelf in its place. As you can see, I'm putting in a lot of holes, but as I said, I did have this drill. And since I'm planning to leave all these things on the wall once I leave, I think I'm actually doing the landlord a favor by installing all these shelves in the kitchen. While for this option, I did drill holes into the wall for the next storage shelf that you see right underneath it, I actually used stickers. That means you have to put the stickers onto the wall, wait 48 hours to 72 hours and then mount the storage shelves onto the stickers and it will be just as rigid. 
Now look at all these cute things I got for my kitchen sink. This is a soap dispenser and I got a sponge in the shape of an avocado. Finally a little towel rack for you to put on two to three towels. Always handy to have that in place. I have a pipe right next to the sink. I happened to find a cart that fits exactly into that space. Another storage solution I really needed was this sticker that enables me to hang a lid onto the wall instead of putting it on the table. Next if you're like me and like baking then you have all these baking sheets and plastic foils and what's or not in order to have all of these things together i decided to use this storage solution we just talked about the kitchen cabinet so let us have a quick look at what it looked like when i just moved in oh no what a nightmare isn't it this is the saddest kitchen cabinet i've ever seen exactly absolutely appalling but I still need at least one kitchen cabinet, that's why I didn't throw it out. I was thinking about it, but getting a new kitchen cabinet costs so much money and getting one that fits exactly into that space secondhand is near to impossible. So I decided to keep it and gave it a fresh coat of paint. Before we get started, let's have a quick look at what I was using. Three little doorknobs, some leftover white paint, a paintbrush and a screwdriver. Depending on the surface of your kitchen cabinet, I do encourage you to use sandpaper to sand it down first. Then it's time to put on several coats of paint. In my case, I put on four layers. The next problem you will see I had was the interior of the kitchen cabinet. It's very old and sort of tough to give it a new coat of paint because the wood is just too old to do much with it. Instead, I found a different solution to make the interior of the kitchen cabinet work for me. The magic word is adhesive shelf liners. As you can see, it's extremely easy to use. Just have something like a card in your hands in order to make everything nice and flat. Then use an X-Acto knife to cut off all the overlapping spaces. Finally, I put in my beloved glass jars, which I use to put in my spices as well as noodles and so on. I love how the glass jars keep everything nice and tidy while looking very neat. Did you spot my new red doorknobs? To the right of the cabinet, I have two drawers where I repeated the same process once again. As you can see, it makes the drawers look much nicer to have that shelf liner in there. Another great aspect of it is that in case you're not sticking it the way you want it, you can take it out and just try your luck once again. It's very easy to work with. Now the white thing you see me cutting are separators. It's awesome how they allow you to separate a drawer depending on what things you'd like to put inside so that not everything is just floating around. It helped me a lot since the drawers are just of this predetermined size and most of the things I wanted to put inside as you can see are of a very different size. I'm glad how all of this turned out as you can see once again the nice red doorknobs that I find absolutely adorable and the kitchen cabinet interior is ready to go. The last step was to clean the countertop and put on some backsplash. It's pretty much the same process as doing the shelf liners for the drawers. I love the new look of my kitchen cabinet and it just feels like I got a new kitchen cabinet altogether. Let's remember together what it looked like before absolutely horrifying and this is what it looks like after nice and clean with little red doorknobs what do you think this kitchen cabinet makeover was like one of the cheapest things i've done it hardly cost any money i just used some leftover white paint that i had then i got some shelf liners to make the interior look a bit nicer as well as some dividers so it makes much more sense where to put the things and last but not least i got some red doorknobs that i'm absolutely in love with and they fit exactly in this mood that i wanted to have in my kitchen we are getting there, it's nearly the end of my kitchen makeover. The last step in the kitchen that I had to address was the window. So I have one window in the kitchen and I needed some curtains for it. So I went for two white curtains, one at the bottom and one at the top. You're going to see how I'm mounting them, it was very easy. And for those of you who are asking, why would she need any curtains in the kitchen? Because some people asked me that question before. While I was doing the kitchen makeover, especially when I was painting the walls, I was going up and down the ladder. And one day I realized the neighbors in the opposite building were actually making pictures of me painting my walls. I have no idea what was that exciting about me painting the walls but both neighbors on the other side were making pictures of me and I really hated that feeling. So I had to have some privacy and that's the reason why I went for the curtains. Also one very weird thing that happened on the last day when I was mounting the lamp which you just saw one of the neighbors in the opposite building was holding up a sign which read do you need any help like a huge billboard sign with lights on it where you can type in the message you wanted to display so he typed in would you need any help which is just so weird and sort of freaked me out i'm not that rich that i can just move from one place to the next so i decided to get curtains instead and i hope it helps to get the neighbors out of my life forever 
so excited to get my new curtains onto the window as you can see i put on a sticker to the bottom part of the window as well so that it's completely blocked out and nobody can look inside anymore and both the top and the bottom of the window do have curtains on them and here a quick picture of what it looks like in the end with the curtains in place now that I've shared all the different parts of the makeover with you, it's time to see the before and after comparison. So let me show you the before situation in case you've forgotten it. Here are the pictures that I made when I moved in. As you can see, everything looked very, very sad. And I'm glad to have given this kitchen a new facelift. And now it's time to see what the apartment looks like after the makeover. Here is a quick video overview so you get a better sense for the space. As you can see, although I didn't spend much money on this, there's quite a change between the pictures I sent you earlier and the current situation of my kitchen. Now let's have a look at some pictures up close. To the left we have the fridge that we painted next to it, the kitchen cabinet. Here you can see a storage rack that I mounted to the wall. It allows me to put on some spices that I use for cooking. Next to it we have this table that fits exactly into the dimensions of my kitchen. I used the two bottom shelves for some storage space. Since I love baking I have to try to keep the tabletop pretty much empty so I placed the blender to the left and to the right you can see my very cute drying rack that I used to dry my plates. Now if you continue to the right on top of the sink you can see both storage shelves that I mounted. If you look a bit closer you can see the monkeys that I hung on there to hang things like scissors and other small utensils. And if you look on top of the highest shelf that I mounted you will see this wonderful kitchen clock that I think fits perfectly into my kitchen. I continued this red pink feel wherever I could. For instance on these pipes I put on some magnetic ladybugs. This is the end of my video for today. I've shown you how I spent 80 bucks on transforming my kitchen in my rental apartment. I hope you had fun watching it. Maybe you've seen something you'd like to try out in your own kitchen that would be awesome. If you do try out something do tell me in the comment section below. I'd love to find out. Have a look at my other videos that I've already posted about my apartment makeover and let me know what you think about it. Especially which aspect of my kitchen makeover that you like the most. I think in my opinion my favorite part was the fridge makeover over as well as the kitchen cabinet makeover just because it was a lot of fun to do also it cost me hardly anything to do these makeovers and anyone can do them even if you have no experience whatsoever so don't be afraid get your paintbrush i'm going to get started with the last space in my apartment which is the balcony i can't wait to show you in my next video what it will look like stay tuned do follow me if you like this video and would like to find out what i'm going to do next i can't wait to see you in my next video bye <laughs>